you get a picture here for uh, what it looked like as we came in in the morning. On our first morning, you can see a number of photographs here of an area which was called the forest. This was a uh, uh, garden area in the center of the hospital, so the hospital was uh, a square with a central courtyard. And when we arrived there, we found this forest area uh, with hundreds, if not thousands of patients uh, in random array. There was no rhyme or reason. And one of our first jobs was to triage this entire area and decide which patients required surgical procedures, which required IV hydration, antibiotics, etc. And so you get a picture here for uh, what it looked like as we came in in the morning. And then there are a number of pictures here which demonstrate the total destruction of the city. It really looks as if it had been bombed. You can see here a long street with rubble on each side, and you can see one of the Navy ships just off the coast. This is a photograph here of what essentially is their Supreme Court. This was the Palace of Justice. And as you can see, it was completely brought to the ground. Example of a tent city. This is right next to the Presidential Palace, so all around the Presidential Palace. People were essentially living there in makeshift tents, tarps hung by trees. The cathedral was heavily damaged in downtown Port-au-Prince. However, the, the uh, crucifixion scene here was not damaged, and, and the Haitians have taken great comfort in that. And if you stand here for 15 or 20 minutes, you'll see Haitians bringing flowers and, and praying by that site. We're in between the original palace and the um, cathedral. We're walking towards the cathedral. Gary. Again, a, a picture here just demonstrating the support that we received from the 82nd Airborne. So they were stationed within the hospital, actually, in one of the buildings which was still standing. And they provided uh, security, uh, but also did essentially anything we needed them to do, from carrying patients to having their medics scrub in with us. This is the pediatric hospital, which unfortunately was condemned, so we were not able to treat patients in there, and that will have to be raised and completely rebuilt. 82nd Airborne providing security for the operating room to make sure that uh, only operating room personnel uh, were allowed in there, since we had tried to maintain some sterility in there. This is Gary Rogers and Pam Gorgone. Craig McLean working on a patient with a craniofacial injury. And this is an example of the sacrifice and the commitment uh, from our team. For the first three or four nights, um, about half the team required IV fluids. And you can see Pam and, and uh, Pam Gorgon and Jay Hartford here who were getting their liter of fluid before we went home. It was hot and humid and we weren't acclimatized to it yet. And uh, I would say Particularly, the nurses were going non-stop from uh, 6 a.m. until 10, 11, 12 at night. No one was spared. Here's an example of a almost or nearly 100-year-old woman. No one was sure quite how old she was, but she had a severe left lower extremity crush injury and required a below knee amputation. It was surprisingly easy to get everyone to collaborate in that setting. You would think it would be like herding cats, but it was uh, surprisingly easy, I think, because everyone was really committed to uh, getting the job done down there.